Hey everybody, RPG here. Today I'm gonna to show you guys around the Retroflag Pi Station case for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's take a closer look at the different functions and features of this particular case. And then we're gonna actually test this out by installing the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it and jumping into RetroPie. All right, so here we have the Retroflag Pi Station case compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. So this is going to be great for uh, retro gaming on RetroPie or whatever emulation platform you prefer. So I just want to kind of show you guys the box because this is a really nice box, super reinforced. Uh, backside has a, it says instruction at the top, but it's basically just a diagram that points out the different functions and features of the Pi Station case. And believe it or not, I actually took out the case already, but I want to show you this. I'm squeezing this really hard right here, and you can see that from the side, it's not caving in at all. So this is reinforced. So you know right off the bat that this is super safe and secure when they send this to you. I already unpacked everything just to make the uh, video a little bit more seamless here, but uh, I am impressed by the quality of the box because so many things when you buy them off of Amazon or really anywhere online and they ship it to you, you see how cheap and inexpensive the uh, packaging is. And that's not the case here at all. Really nicely done from Retroflag. So I'm gonna set that aside and we are gonna pull over the actual Pi Station case. So before we dive into the case itself, I want to talk about the manual that comes with this because I always dive into manuals um, just to see what the quality is like on them. So open this up and you can see here there's diagrams all over, which is great if you're visual like I am. I can read things all day long. I just don't retain the information well. I have a lot of trouble following along and kind of understanding and making sense of everything. So um, if I can read steps and then see diagrams to, you know, kind of visually, um, you know, keep up with the steps that I'm reading, that's a huge help to me. So we have three major diagrams here, a couple smaller ones up at the top, and then flipping this over, there's some additional ones here. So that looks really promising. We're going to set that aside because I am going to reference this when we actually start setting this up and installing the Raspberry Pi within. But let's take a closer look at the actual Pi Station case. So looking over here from right to left, we have an open button right here. So if we hit that, it pops the top on the top of our Pi Station case. We have some ventilation right here because the Raspberry Pi computer board will be sitting right below this. So it's nice to have uh, easy access there for some ventilation. We also have, I'm gonna to try to zoom in so you can see here, a little outline right here for a micro SD card. So this is actually a little storage tray. So if you're somebody like me that likes to use two different micro SD cards for RetroPie, then you could be using one micro SD card and then put the other one in here for safe and secure storage. Now this pushes down just like that. Now over here we actually have our power button and then a reset button. So let's go to the front of the case. We have two USB ports right in front. So this also looks very much like an original PlayStation console because if we were using wired controllers, we could just connect them right here off of the front. Going over here to the left-hand side, you'll notice we actually have a little tab right here. So if we push that in, I'm gonna struggle because I don't have fingernails, but um, if we can pry this open, you can see we have access to some additional ports on the uh, Pi. So I don't have the Pi installed yet, so we will circle back and take a look at everything once it's installed, but looks like our ethernet will be right here and maybe some additional USB ports, I'm guessing. Not too sure, but we will check back once we install the actual Raspberry Pi. Now on the backhand side, we can see here we have some additional connections as well. Dual micro HDMI ports right here, as well as our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Over here we have our power supply for the DC in. And then we actually have two screw holes here. Not entirely sure what those are for. Maybe that will uh, reveal itself to us once we get started with the installation. Uh, or maybe it's for mounting something to it. Now over here, um, nothing on this side. So I'm actually going to open this up. So it's not screwed into place or anything. It's just kind of sandwiched together. So I'm gonna just flip these so we can see everything easily here but we have a little baggie with a screwdriver and some screws that we're going to need to actually mount the um, mount and secure the Raspberry Pi 4 to the inside of this case. Here we have some connections. We're just gonna kind of pull those up. They're connected to this board right here, so uh, they aren't detachable or anything like that. They just, 
you know, sit in place. All right, so here I have my Raspberry Pi 4 computer board. So I'm actually going to spin all of this around real quick just to make this a little bit easier. So the side that I actually have to make the connections on is closer to me. So first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our USB connection here from the actual case and we're going to take our Raspberry Pi right here. So we're going to make our connection to the USB and we're going to go right into the first ones here. So this is the regular USB, not the USB uh, threes. And that connects firmly in place just like that. All right, so once we have that secured in place, we're going to just kind of lift the board up and you're gonna take this connection here. And if you take a look right here, we have our pins on our Raspberry Pi 4. This is going to connect all the way into the end of it. So if you look closely here, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see, there's a little tab that's lifted up here. You just rub that up against the edge there and these will lock right into place. You just wanna make sure that you line them up and you don't you know, shove them down too hard or anything because those pins are super frail you could definitely do some damage. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. You can see, I know it's hard in this video to see, but um, there is that little tab and that just goes down the um, side of those pins. So you really can't go wrong with this connection. So now what we're going to do is we are going to kind of just carefully bend all those cables down and sit them into place. And you're gonna notice on this side, we have the outlet here for the uh, micro HDMI ports and those line up just like this. So we just have to kind of bend those cables down. They've never been bent this way. So we kind of have to just carefully wrestle them down. And you'll notice that these holes here actually line up with the posts that are located right behind them. So once we do that, we can get out our screws here and we're gonna be using these little black screws here. And there's only three screws. When I first saw that there's only three, I thought maybe they left one out because there's clearly four holes on every Raspberry Pi uh, computer board. And then there's even four posts below here, but we actually leave this one off, the one closest to the USB connection. So we're gonna just kind of line this up again because I let it pop back up. I can see that it does line up really nicely. And using the screwdriver here, which luckily does have that magnetic tip, we can just lift them up and kind of carefully put them into place. And luckily, when you get the uh, first one in, everything else just starts to go into place that much easier. So uh, magnetic tip here isn't really super strong though, so you still kind of have to uh, guide it quite a bit. All right, so that is everything here. Now we're going to put the top on and you just want to line up. You have your HDMI ports here and your audio jack right there. So just turn this until you have the side that clearly matches up. And without having to wrestle it or anything like that, it just locks into place super easily. So now we have six remaining screws. And if we take a look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six holes that the screws have to go into. All right, so we got all six screws in place. This is fully locked in. So I wanna go back over to that side panel that we were checking out before. And since I have this here, rather than wrestling with this, let me just pop it that way. So yeah, as I suspected, the um, USB three ports actually line up perfectly with this hole here. So we have full access to those. I was hoping that would be the case. And then obviously ethernet we knew was gonna line up there as well. So love the fact that this is uh, easy to remove and add in because if we're not actually utilizing those, definitely good to keep the cover on. That way dust doesn't get in there or anything like that. So let's take a closer look on the back side. We have both of those micro HDMIs lined up perfect as well as the audio jack and then the um, actual power supply as well. So everything's looking perfect on here. I can't wait to power this on and test it out. So let's actually flip it over to the back side now. And you can see we have access to a micro SD card slot. So let me grab my micro SD card, slide it in, and we're gonna test this out. All right, so I have my 256 micro SD card right here. So I'm going to just slide it in exactly as the little diagram tells me to here, which is like this. So uh, graphic side facing you slides in just like that. Really nice because it's super secure. There's no risk of ever pulling this out. In fact, you just have to use your fingernail and um, I'm able to do it without even having fingernails that 
ever sort of helped me out with any of this stuff. So that's always good that you don't need to get like a screwdriver and pick it out or anything like that. But definitely super secure, no risk of, you know, just grazing this or anything like that and popping the card out because you always hate to pop the card out if this is booted up. All right, so now that that is secured in place, it's time to make our connections with our HDMI cable. So we'll go over to the back side and we'll go into this port closest to the power supply. And then same thing, we'll connect the power supply right here. And now we just have to hit our power button. That lights up, you can see the little display light right there, lit up red. All right, so here we are booted right into RetroPie. I've plugged in my Super Nintendo controller here. You can see it's a wired controller right into Player One's USB port here. So let's jump into a game. Uh, let's do Nintendo Entertainment System since I have a controller that's gonna clearly work with that. So let's jump in here and let's go right into Super Mario Brothers 3. All right, so here we are, Super Mario Brothers 3. All right, so as we saw from this video, the process for setting up and installing the Raspberry Pi 4 computer board inside the Pi Station case was super easy and straightforward. Just took a couple short minutes to get everything fully installed and ready to rock and roll. So I love the fact that it's easy to set up. I love the functionalities of the buttons on here. We have a reset button on top. We have the power button on top. And um, what I like about the power button and reset button is typically on a Raspberry Pi 4 computer board, you're turning it on as soon as you provide power to it. So as soon as you connect your power cable to the actual board, everything's gonna start booting right up. Unless you have one of those cables that has the on and off switch on it, but even still, I think by default, they're going to power on unless you have that clicked in prior to providing the power. With something like this, you connect the power supply, but it won't turn on until you hit the power button. So I do like that. And it also gives you the ability with that whole setup that when you actually power it down, you obviously want to go through your safe shutdown um, script or process within your card. If you're running RetroPie, just go to your main menu and shut it down that way. But once you power it down, you don't have to physically remove that cable from the back of the unit. You just hit the power button and you can leave all your cables fully connected. That's a really nice feature on here. A lot of cooling fan cases out there or cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 um, do not have that functionality or capability rather. So. Uh, I do want to mention though, this is not a cooling fan case. So I think there's been a little confusion with that because when we pop the top on here, you can see ventilation here, but there's no uh, cooling fan installed any, anywhere in here. So I do want to make mention of that and just clarify that so there's no confusion at all. Um, I would have liked to have seen a cooling fan in here because it does get a little warm. We saw in the video, all I jumped into was Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Mario Brothers 3 specifically. Um, not a game that really stresses the Raspberry Pi 4 out at all. Um, you're not gonna run into overheating issues with that, but I did feel it getting pretty warm after just a couple minutes of play. So if we were jumping into more advanced collections like PlayStation N64, Dreamcast, PSP, these are collections that draw a lot of power and in return are going to heat up your Raspberry Pi a lot quicker. Um, so if you're gonna be playing games like that, I definitely could foresee some issues with overheating if you're playing for a long period of time. Obviously you can just pop the top on this, get a little airflow going, but airflow isn't the same as having a cooling fan installed in there to proactively be consistently cooling your Raspberry Pi 4 computer board. So I uh, would have liked to see the capability of at least being able to attach a cooling fan in here. We don't have the clearance to do that. We don't have the post to actually secure a fan to. So it's just not a, a possibility here at all. You're going to be limited to just using those um, vents there for you know some level of airflow as you can see there are quite a few vents they are placed right over the board so that's good but I don't think it's going to be too proactive for you so cooling is definitely going to be an issue depending on what collections you're diving into and the amount of time that you're gonna be playing if you're gonna be playing retro collections like NES 
Super Nintendo Genesis, uh, arcade, stuff like that for short periods of time, this is gonna be perfectly fine for you. Uh, or if you're just using this, not even for gaming, and you're just using this as like your computer, um, you know, housing for a Raspberry Pi 4 that you'll be surfing the web on or doing coding or stuff like that, stuff that's not going to really stress your Raspberry Pi and overheat it, then it's perfectly fine for that as well. But given the fact that it's obviously a uh, PlayStation sort of vibe here, I think that the intention is to do gaming on this. And for that, I think you do need to have that cooling fan aspect to this. So that would be my only issue with this. But other than that, everything is great. I love the layout. I love the look of it. I love the um, placement of all of the um, features of this. So like the micro HDMI placement in the back is great. Obviously most cases out there have all of that on the side. So I love the fact that it's in the back. You can get that um, you know, retro console feel from it because obviously all those connections on the original consoles were all in the back too. Just a cleaner, crisper look. I love the fact that we have that little side panel there that we can take off to access the additional USB 3 ports as well as the ethernet port. So everything about this just rocks except for the fact that obviously we are missing that cooling fan aspect to this. So that's my only uh, downside to this. That's the only con. Everything else is obviously a pro here. So uh, that's really going to do it for today. I just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention, show you guys around this really cool case. And there's actually another version of this as well, which the other version, when you pop this, it actually opens all the way up and there is a screen on there. So um, it's an all-in-one sort of console and display. So they were back ordered on that. I actually ordered that and they said that they were going to be a little delayed with that one. So definitely stay tuned for the video for that once it comes in. I think that's going to be really cool as well. So again, that's going to do it for today. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comments section below. Always happy to help you guys out. Any questions that you have, I'll hopefully have answers for you. But um, if you haven't subscribed to the Retropod Guy YouTube channel yet, I highly recommend doing that. I do a ton of different videos on here for retro gaming. So we do tutorials, product reviews like this one, uh, gameplay demos, the Forgotten Favorites YouTube series every Monday and Thursday nights on here. So best way to stay in the loop for future videos is to hit that subscribe button. You could do that in the corner of this video right now if you'd like. So again, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching.